pilots study their opponents the way football teams watch game films. How fast are their jets? How do they fly them? How tight do they turn? And in the final analysis, how does the pilot think? To get some answers to our questions, we flew to Kadovsky Air Base, the preeminent flight test center in Russia, to see the adversary jets fly. In this case, flying at the hands of the pilots who are writing the training manuals used by the countries that we may one day fight. Join us as Challenge of Flight looks at the fighter aircraft of Russia in this special edition, Adversary Air, the ultimate challenge. As we begin, we first look at an aspect of military flying that's rare in the U.S. Pilots flying dissimilar aircraft in formation flight. There's a degree of confidence involved in what you're about to see. First, the Yak-38, Russia's counterpart to our Harrier, flies tethered with the Mil Mi-8 hip helicopter. The Yak-38 uses three engines, a single main power plant exhausting through vectored nozzles in the rear, and two lift engines just behind the cockpit. Next, we see this unusual three shell. The supersonic afterburning Su-27 flanker and its Su-30 variant flying with the incredibly slow Li-2, a Russian version of the DC-3 from the days of its licensed co-production in the Soviet Union. Now, watch these behemoths fly. A heavy jet flying with a turboprop in its wake. 
the Beriev BE-42 Albatross, the world's largest amphibious aircraft, and its older brother, the BE-12 Male. Both ships fly coastal patrol, fisheries protection, and the SAR function. Of course, it's hard not to look at the helos. We rarely see multi-ship helicopter formation flight at our air shows, so we were fascinated by these formations that flew at Kudovsky. First, the Mil-24 Hines, Russia's powerful assault and gunship helicopter. It's designed to carry eight soldiers inside, racks of missiles on its outriggers, and up to four barrels from its chin-mounted nose turret.
the distinctive Kamoff helicopter designs were showcased in this flyby. Kamoff developed the unusual contra-rotating coaxial twin rotor configuration for the Soviet Navy's procurement of carrier-based helos. In addition to improved agility and benign handling, the Kamoff design reduced the size of the rotors, thus saving carrier deck space. The design was extended to a battlefield attack single-seat helicopter in a Soviet competition as a counterpart to our own Apaches. The KA-50 Hokum was the winner and flies here in its latest variation, the Werewolf. three main Russian strategic bombers, and they are formidable. Best known for its swept wings and turboprop engines is the Tu-142 Bear, a favorite intercept target for American fighter pilots, and often photographed in formation with our jets. The Bear is a well-respected veteran of the Cold War. The H version, flown here, carries the powerful AS-15 cruise missiles in the flying routine, note the aggressive bank and pitch inputs the pilot makes.
the TU-22M Backfire is an ominous looking strategic bomber designed to carry nuclear bombs at supersonic speeds at high altitude. Twin, afterburning engines and variable geometry wings give it an aggressive, versatile flight envelope, particularly for a bomber. The Tu-160 Blackjack is Russia's largest intercontinental bomber. It has a very powerful design, four afterburning engines, variable geometry wings, nuclear bombs, cruise missiles, short-range attack missiles, delivered at speeds up to Mach 1.88. The Su-27 Flanker, one of the world's most respected tactical fighter aircraft. Similar in performance to our F-15s. Max speed, Mach 2.35. Max ceiling, 59,000 feet. All weather capability. Look down, shoot down radar. Powerful enough to launch from a carrier deck without a catapult. This starting sequence features a two ship of Su-27s the SU-27 and the SU-30 two-seat variant. Watch the turns. The Russian pilots fly a smoother, softer corner on their turns. We tend to come around in legs, over to unload the G's and set up the turn, then right or left into a 90-degree bank, then over again to come back down, show center. The Russians do theirs in a continuous motion. Watch also for their in-trail formation.
not to be outdone is the MiG-29 Fulcrum. Similar in size and performance to our F-18 Hornets, the Fulcrum first flew in 1977 and has been exported to at least 10 nations, including North Korea, Syria, Iraq, Czechoslovakia, and India. Our performer today lights up the afterburners, pops the brakes, and gets the act up and flying with minimum runway roll. This is an aggressive display and says much about the mindset of the Russian fighter pilot. From takeoff, he flies a powerful aerobatic display, flown almost entirely in afterburner, including prolonged knife edge passes and high G turns.
The Russian Knights formed in 1991 and have thrilled air show spectators since. Similar to our Blue Angels and our Thunderbirds, the Knights perform a six ship, four ship, and solo routine. The following few minutes are highlights from their performances, including a surprising pass with flares popping.
when we cataloged the flying demonstrations, we rated the Su-27 Solo as one of the most important flights that we filmed. Here, you see the Flanker at its very best, flown to include almost every significant move the fighter pilot would employ in air-to-air -air combat, including high-G turns, slow flight, and the most unusual maneuver in the sky today, the Cobra.
Adversary aircraft is a fighter pilot's ultimate challenge. Shoot down or be shot down. Intercept the bomber or lose the city you're defending. These are the aggressor aircraft Americans train to fight. Defeating the adversary is paramount to the fighter pilot. And for those pilots, being number one in the air is the ultimate challenge of flight.